Hello and welcome to my live broadcasting. God bless you. I hope everybody is doing okay. Nice to have you here with us. God bless you and your loved beloved ones. Hope everyone is doing okay. Can you hear me guys? Is my sound loud and clear? Thank you for the confirmation. God bless. <clears throat> Before we start, let me say it's showtime, right? We have to do this from now on, right? I told you, I mean, uh, come on, this, this is my sentence. My, no, come on, no one can take it from me now. It's mine. I made it my own now. <laughs> I mean, like I say, if David Wood can say TikTok, I can say it's showtime, right, guys? I mean, bear with me, right? <laughs> Like I said, God bless you guys. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your support. Don't forget to keep us in your prayers. Uh, so we will have the still the courage and God guiding us to keep doing what we do because we are only doing this for the truth. Nothing else matters except the truth. Before we start, guys, please pray with me in the name of our Holy Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Lord, please forgive our daily sins and guide us to forgive others who might persecute us or maybe love to curse us because you know, we are followers of your holy son jesus christ glory to his name enfold us in your arms lord fill us with your holy spirit and give us the courage and wisdom today and always to overcome lies taqiyya and deception give us some guidance lord that we might reflect your light within this dark, sad world, and that we speak your word with boldness and draw others to your feet, Lord, and that we be guided through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, give us the courage today and always to do whatever needs to be done in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen. <clears throat> Today, guys, on this live broadcast, we will have the opportunity to talk about Islam and paganism. We're going to show you that Islam actually had pagan roots. And as you see here in the background picture, this is Allah and his three bird idol daughters, right? Allah, al Uzza, wal Manad. And here you see the pagan symbol, the symbol of the moon idol, Allah, that already existed before Islam. So we're going to do some nice teaching. And when I finish my teaching, guys, we will have a nice Q&A session in the end, like always, with our guests. And I hope that there are Muslims who are watching and listening and maybe they have the courage and the knowledge to call me then live on Skype. Yes, as a Muslim, you can call us live on Skype. So maybe we can have a nice and respectful discussion. And I hope that you have the knowledge to refute my today's teaching. So. Maybe we have, uh, we will be honored basically with the presence of an Ustaz or Imam or Sheikh who can refute me and maybe prove to us how Islam is not a pagan cult. So let us start guys today's teaching. Like I said, today we're going to prove to you that Islam is nothing but a pagan satanic cult. It's not the first satanic cult and it's for certainly it's not the last satanic cult on this planet, right? 
and the proof is in front of you. I mean, how, how much more proof do you want? Right? The Quran talks about Allah. The Quran mentions Allah tal uzza wal manad. And we see this symbol on every mosque. Right, guys? Every mosque has the devil horns. Right? Which we call the moon idol. <laughs> right? So, <clears throat> since we already have one dislike, that means we have a, one Muslim, and I hope this Muslim, Muhammadan, is an Ustaz who will call us live on Skype. So, guys, please let only the Muslims call me if they think they have the knowledge and the courage to refute me, to refute my today's teaching. So, let us start, guys. As you see here in the background, this man is called Sarman Rushdi, Salman Rushdi. In the 80s, I believe, in the 80s, 90s, this guy wrote a very famous book that became the, one of the best sellers in literature, right? And if we can quote this guy who wrote the Satanic Verses book, which became a very famous book, he said, Prophet Muhammad would have no objection to the satanic verses. Why? Because Muhammad gave the satanic verses to the pagan Quraysh and he bowed down and did sujood, prostration, he prostrated to Allah al Uzza wal Manad. And you know, when his book came out, this guy became so famous, right? The, the Muslim leaders, the Muslim Ummah put millions and millions of dollars on his head. If a Muslim could capture him and kill him and present his head on a silver platter, they will give him millions. And this guy till today is hiding. He's hiding because Muslims want to kill him. Yeah. Yeah, really, yeah. You see, this is Salman Rushdie. But where do you think Salman Rushdie got the idea of the satanic verses? From the Quran. Yes, you heard it correctly. From the Quran. So, if you are interested in his book, you can still find it on Amazon. Right? But this guy didn't bring us anything new. Because the Satanic Verses is a well-known historical fact in the life of Muhammad. The fake prophet of Islam. So, if we go to the Quran, guys. If we go to the Quran... Chapter 22, Ayah 52, we can read. Never did we send a messenger or a prophet before you, but that whenever he had a desire, a wish, Satan interfered with that desire. Allah eradicates the interference of Satan and strengthens his sign. If we read the Arabic, actually, it says that Satan put the words of the tongue of Muhammad, right? Satan put words in the tongue of Muhammad. And if we go to Tafsir, we'll understand this ayah better because, you know, the Quran doesn't make sense without Tafsir, right? This is the same chapter, guys. Chapter 22, ayah 52. Chapter 22, ayah 52, Tafsir. Very respectful Tafsir. The reason why this ayah came down, as Bab al-Nuzul, by Al-Wahidi, Asbab Al-Nuzul by Al-Wahidi, highly respected early tafsir source. So read with me. The commentators of the Quran said, when the Messenger of Allah, Allah play, praying on him, there's nothing called bless him, Allah praying on him, when we ask Muslims, why is Allah praying and to who is Allah praying when he prays on Muhammad? We don't get an answer. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallah, pray on him. Sallallahu alayhi. Alahu, on who? On Muhammad. So there's nothing called bless. It's praying. Allah loves to pray on Muhammad. Then if we continue that his people were shunning him, he was aggrieved by the rejection of the message he brought them. And he secretly wished that Allah exalted as he revealed something to which he would bring him and his people closer to each other. So basically what he's saying is Muhammad was really hoping that 
he would could reconcile with the pagan Quraysh, right? That the pagan Quraysh would listen to him and he hoped that Allah would bring him something. Keen as he was, yeah, Muhammad was so keen, you know, wow, oof, 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 where is Christian Prince? Oof, oof, oof. To see them accept faith so that they accept Islam. One day he sat in one of the congregations of the Quraysh, so he was sitting with the pagan Quraysh, the pagans of Mecca, which attracted a huge number of its members. So there was a huge crowd, guys, pay attention, okay? This is important stuff. Take notes. Let me give you also the link. Let me give you the link so you can read with me. Please bookmark it safer. This is really important. This is talking about the satanic verses, guys. So, and he wished that Allah, exalted, does not reveal to him on that day anything that might repel them from him. So, he hoped that the Allah would not send anything at that moment, you know, because he wanted to be friends with the pagans, right? Reconcile with them. So Allah, exalted as he, revealed to him then. So Allah didn't listen anyway to Muhammad, you know. So Allah revealed Surah an najm right? Chapter 53, right? Chapter 53. The Messenger of Allah, Allah praying on him, recited it. But when he reached, have you thought upon Allah, Al-Uzza, wal manad the third? The three bird idols of Allah, the three bird daughters the daughters of Allah. You see, Allat, Al Uzza, Wal Manat. And he comes, he comes, the devil, always the devil being much stronger than Allah, much mightier than Allah, right? Allah cannot protect Muhammad from the devil. So the devil controlled Muhammad. He take Muhammad being taken over by the devil. What did the devil do, guys? I mean, the proof is in front of you. Don't say this is my words. This is tafsir for the ayah. This is Quran, guys. So the devil put on the tongue of Muhammad what he had secretly wished and hoped for and said. Now, this, is, this part is the satanic verses, guys, that is highlighted in front of you. These are the mighty cranes, the bird crane idols, right? Cranes are birds, right? Al Gharaniq and their intercession is hoped for, right? So these are the words that Muhammad got from Satan, from the devil, right? Not from Allah. So here Satan was giving him revelation to Muhammad, right? تلك الغرانيق العلا إن شفاعتهن لترتجى. These are the mighty cranes, and their intercession is hoped for. These are the exact words that Satan gave to Muhammad. So when the pagan Quraysh, guys, when they hear this from Muhammad, when Muhammad delivered the satanic verses to the pagan Quraysh, his own people in Mecca, when they heard this they were very happy they were really pleased with muhammad why he was complimenting their pagan idols right you, did you catch it and these three bird idols were basically bird idols who carried when when the pagans used to pray right to allah so Allah already existed, guys. Pay attention. This is really important, guys. So when the pagans used to pray to Allah, these three bird idols, Allah al Uzza wal Manad the third, they because they could fly, they had wings. They were cranes, right? We know what cranes are. Those are birds, right? They used to fly with their wings all the way to Allah, carrying the prayers of the pagan people to the supreme moon idol Allah. Did you catch it? So Muhammad was saying really beautiful stuff about their pagans because the devil said so. The devil gave those satanic verses to Muhammad. Right? And then, and then he kept reciting and reciting and then he prostrated to the idols. You see, he bowed down, 
do it sujood, do the three bird idols. All the Muslims followed Muhammad and did sujood, prostration, act of worship. And the pagans <laughs> who were present prostrated too. You see, they all started to worship together with Muhammad and all the Muslims. So look how many people are committing shirk, guys. All the Muslims are prostrating. Muhammad is prostrating, right? And the pagans are prostrating. So they all started to worship Allah, Al Uzza, Wal Manad. Did you catch it? And then later, if we keep continue reading, if we keep continue reading, guys, Jibril, that evening, Jibril came to spank Muhammad. <laughs> what have you done, Muhammad? Uh oh. Oof, oof, oof. Jibril came to spank Muhammad, right? He, he let Muhammad sit on his lap and he started to spank him. What have you done, Muhammad? So Jibril saying, Jibril saying, what have you done, Muhammad? Oh, oh, this is not what I told you. This is Satan telling you this. You recited to the people which I did not bring from Allah. And you said what I did not say to you. Did you catch it? So Jibril is confirming that Muhammad was giving, delivering the satanic verses from Satan to the people. And everyone prostrated and bowed down to the satanic verses and for the idols. Where can you find this? I just gave you the link, man. This is chapter 22. I have 52. Let me give you the link again. This is chapter 22. You see on the screen? Look at the screen. Chapter 22, I have 52. The tafsir for the Quran. This ayah. Chapter 22, I have 52. So the satanic verses are in the Quran, guys. This is Quran. Don't blame me. This is Quran. Right? Please copy the link, use it, bookmark it, save it, use it in your debates with Muslims. Right? So this is basically a small introduction to show you that Muhammad was nothing but a blasphemer, a mushrik. And all the Muslims were mushrikun and the pagans were mushrikun. Did you catch it? Last time I checked, shirk is the unforgivable sin in Islam. So, do you think that, that Allah would forgive this shirk? Okay, welcome uh, Prophet Google. Okay, it's okay my friend. We just started so you didn't miss out much. <clears throat> By the way, uh, you, you're an Armenian. Sorry, last time I called you a Russian, right? You're an Armenian. Inchbe says. Chicho says. <laughs> now, I only know these couple Armenian words. I, I have Armenian friends, right? You're Armenian, right, my friend? I, I, can't, I can't pronounce your name because you are using... Inchbe says. No, and you're Chaldinian? Okay. I'm an Assyrian myself, but I'm talking about uh, to the Armenian guy. Yeah, we have an Armenian. Oh, that's beautiful. We have a Chaldinian, Assyrian. Yeah, I see. The guy is laughing. Inchbe says, my friend. <laughs> Chicho says. <laughs> wow, we have so many different kind of people in the chat. That's lovely, man. I love it. Love you too, my friend. I love you too. Welcome and God bless. God bless your family. Shlama, Khoni, Shlama. So, if we keep continuing, guys. If we go to the Quran, the satanic, let me show you where the satanic verses originally were before the Muslims took them from the Quran. They wiped them off the Quran. And this, between these verses, guys, the satanic verses were appeared basically so this part let me this part guys these are the mighty cranes the gharaniq right 
and their intercession is hopeful. So this part was originally between these verses. Then Allah abrogated it. Allah removed it, right? Because these were the words of Satan. So it was between here. I think it was here or here, right? So Allah removed it. Well, it's not Allah. We know the Muslims did, right? There's nothing called Allah. So the Muslims removed these satanic verses from here or here, right? So if you read, guys, read with me. This is chapter 53, ayah 19. So have you considered Allah and Al-Uzza and Manad the third? So these are, the, you see the names of the uh, idols are still in the Quran. The other one is the male for you and for him the female. That then is just in just division. So uh, what is Allah saying? You are giving me daughters and you are taking the sons? That's not fair. So Allah is saying he doesn't want daughters. <laughs> it's not fair to have daughters. I want meals. Right? Allah wants sons. He doesn't want daughters. And he calls it un unjust. Right? Allah is saying he, wa he doesn't want to have daughters. That's what Allah is saying. Read out. Read Habibi. Read. So he's talking about Allah al Uzza wal Manad, the third, right? So have you considered Allah al Uzza wal Manad, the third, the other one? Is the male for you? I mean, are the sons for you? Are the males for you? And you are giving me the male? That's not fair. That's unjust. Allah doesn't want to have daughters. Yeah, Allah wants to have sons. Yeah, Allah wants to have a baby boy. So, you know, Muslims actually played with the Quran and they removed the satanic verses from the Quran. This part should be here, here. I think maybe here. I think it's, it was here because, you know, he's mentioning the names of the three bird idols. Allah, al uzza wal manat. Then you get these are the mighty cranes and their intercession is hoped for. Here. And then he continues, right? Did you catch it? Makes sense, right? So the Muslims removed it from this place here. Filthy scumbags playing with the Quran, removing what they don't like, right? Hiding the, the, <laughs> the satanic verses from the Quran, showing that Muhammad was not a mushrik. Right? A blasphemer. Someone who commits shirk. And we showed you the proof. <laughs> wow. Beautiful, beautiful blasphemy. In the life of Muhammad. Delivering the satanic verses. As we mentioned. The satanic verses to the pagan Quraysh, right? Let us continue, guys. Guys, do you like today's teaching? Am I getting you bored or are you still with me, guys? Do you like today's topic? Ah, you likey, likey. I see, I see. That's good, that's good. So, guys, if you have noticed, if you have noticed, the Muslims in Saudi Arabia, they started to build a really large building. I think uh, they created a like a six star hotel and they put on top of this, this satanic symbol. <laughs> you know, let me show you how Mecca looks like now in 2019. Right. This is how Mecca, guys. This is how Mecca looks like now in 2019. You see the Satan horns on top? <laughs> you know, and as you as you are noticing, they are trying to replace the big what what is it called? Big Big Ben or what is what is that tower called in, in London, guys? The Big Ben, right? So they are trying to show the world that they are not, yeah, they don't want the Big Ben anymore. So they, they started to, 
you know, built their own Big Ben. And they put the satanic symbol on top of it, as you see in front of you, right, on the screen. The symbol of Satan that they still worshipping, right? Allah is nothing but Satan. It's the same guy. Jibreel is Satan also, shape-shifting, right? Do you see it? And they want to show you how proud they are about Satan's horns on top of the biggest building in Saudi Arabia, right? I think this is like the, maybe now the fourth, the fifth largest building in the world, maybe the third, I, I, I'm not sure exactly, right? Beautiful, beautiful satanic building with the satanic horns on top of it, right? So this is the part that you see on top. The crescent moon in Mecca, the star in crescent was the emblem of the Ottoman Empire, symbol of Islam. You see this, even the symbol of Islam is nothing but the horns of Satan, the horns of Allah, shapeshifter Satan. The same guy who delivered the satanic verses to Muhammad, right? The crescent and this symbol, guys, we found it actually in many historical evidence that we find during the centuries. The crescent pagan carving of the solar star deity Baal, another name for Allah is Baal, depicted as disc in a crescent. You see that? Luciferian symbol. Right? The symbol of Satan himself. Right? What is three daughters? Allat, Al Uzza, Wal Manad, that you can find in the Quran. And this is the symbol of the Muhammadans, the Abdulism Muslims. Please, Muslims, if this is not convincing enough, then I am not sure what do you call pagan. Islam is nothing but a pagan cult. Please come back home to Jesus. Drop this satanic man-made cult called Islam. Please come back home, Muslims. Don't follow Satan. This is Satan. You are following the prophet of Satan. Please denounce Muhammad, the prophet of Satan, and come back home to Jesus. <sighs> it really makes me sad, guys, that Muslims are so blind that they cannot see that they are nothing but Satan worshippers, right? It makes me sad, guys. You know, this is why I don't like, you know, to mock Muslims. They are already mocking themselves, right? These people are victims especially the ones who have no clue about Islam, who do not do research like we do. It makes me sad to see those people in the dark of Islam. So as we said, Islam and its roots of paganism, pagan roots. Let us continue, guys. Let us show you more proof that Islam is nothing but a pagan religion, right? If we go to Surat Al-An'am, chapter 6, chapter 6, ayah 78, ayah 78. This is talking about Abraham, guys. Let me read the Arabic for you. فَلَمَّا رَأَى الشَّمْسَ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي هَذَا أَكْبَرْ Did you catch it? هَذَا أَكْبَرْ so, Abraham, when he saw the sun, when he saw the sun rising in splendor, he said, This is my Lord, Hada Rabbi. This is my Lord, Abraham is saying. This is Akbar. There's nothing called greatest. This is Akbar. So, who's Akbar? It's the sun. When Muslims say Allahu Akbar, they are actually worshipping Allah, the moon idol, and his wife. Who? Akbar. The sun is called Akbar. Allah, male, plus his wife, the female, Akbar, the sun, right? Allah, 
Allahu Akbar. Allah and the Son who is called Akbar. Did you catch it? Is this enough proof, guys? Is this enough proof? Allah who Akbar means Allah wa Akbar. So Allah and Akbar. And they dare to say that they are worshipping only one God. What a shame. What bunch of deception and lies. You see? Then, then, alright? Then, supposedly, Abraham dropped down the sun and he started to worship only Allah, right? But we see Akbar here, and they are still using Akbar, right? Do you have any Muslim? Can you give the reference? Okay, here's the, here's the link, guys. Chapter 6, Ayah 78, right? فَلَمَّا رَأَى الشَّمْسَ قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي هَذَا أَكْبَرْ This is... When he saw the sun, he said, this is my Lord. So Abraham is saying, when he saw the sun, this is my Lord. This is Akbar. So he called the son, the son, the wife of Allah, Akbar. Did you catch it? I hope you caught it now, by now. Yeah. Oh boy. Oof, oof, oof. Where is Christian Prince? Welcome to the people who just joined in. We are trying to show you when Muslims say Allahu Akbar, Allah and Akbar. We are showing you that the sun actually is Akbar and Allah is the moon idol. Let me repeat it for the people who just joined. فَلَمَّا رَأَى الشَّمْسَ So when, uh, sorry, when Abraham saw the sun. فَلَمَّا رَأَى الشَّمْسَ قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي هَذَا أَكْبَر He said, Abraham said, this is my Lord, this is Akbar. Ak who, is, who is he calling Akbar? The sun, Al Shamsa. Oof, oof, oof. This is my lady, yeah. This is, you know, the lady of who? Of Allah. The Shams is the wife of Allah. The sun is the wife of Allah. And she is called Akbar. And Allah is the moon idol. Yeah, the Shams, Shams means sun in Arabic, yeah? Shams means sun. Akbar, it does not mean greater, it's just the name. Right? The later they, they called it uh, greatest. It has nothing to do with great. it's the name of the sun. Right? The moon idol and the sun called Akbar. With their wife, uh, with their daughters, right? So Allah and the sun. His wife, got daughters, Allah al Uzza wal Manat. Three daughters. You see how what kind of pagan religion Islam is? Right? Not only that, if you go to chapter 36, chapter 36, Yasin. 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 Which is another, nothing but another name for the moon idol. Allah, Yasin. Just Google it, guys. Yasin is another name for the moon idol Allah. Yasin, right? So Allah has many names: Yasin, Baal, Hubal, Allah. They are all names of the moon idol Allah, who is nothing but Satan in disguise. Right? Yasin, yeah. So here, they are calling upon Yasin. Yasin. Right? They are provoking Allah, the moon idol, Yasin. Right? If you go to Surah Al-Ikhlas, guys, Chapter 112. 
right? Chapter 112, read with me. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say Allah is one of. There's nothing called the one and only. This is false translation. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Why didn't Allah write واحد? Guys, in the Arabic, if we are going to count, if I say one, two, three, واحد, اثنين, ثلاثة. One, two, three. واحد, اثنين, ثلاثة. Do you hear أحد, guys? Listen carefully. واحد, اثنين, ثلاثة. One, two, three. أحد means one of. أحد الأولاد. One of the children. Did you catch it? أحد المدارس. One of the schools. أحد الآلهات. One of the gods. Ahad, one of. Did you catch it? Wahad is one, and Ahad means one of. Right? So here Allah should have continued. What does Allah one of what? Allah is one of what? Allah is one of the idols, right? And Tawheed is nothing but unification. Right? Unification. Allah and Akbar and his three bird moon sorry bird idols. Allah al Uzza wal Manat. Allah and Akbar, the son, and his three daughters, Allah wal Uzza wal Manat. This is why Allah is Ahad Al Alihad, right? One of the idols, one of the gods. One of Allah is one of. Right? No, no, uh, Prince C team. No, no, you're mistaken, my friend. El is an Aramaic word. It's an Hebrew word. El means El. You're mistaken, my friend. El means God. So El La means God La. Right? Did you catch it? Yeah, L and L was God, exactly. So it's God la. So the, let me give you ex an example. Lilla for Allah. Lilla. So you catch it? Muslims say Lilla. So their actual name of Allah is La. La is the God of the Muslims. Lilla. Right? For Allah. For la, sorry, for la. There's nothing called Allah. It's la. Lilla, right? And if we continue to the second verse, Allahu Samad. Allahu Samad, guys, is an Hebrew word. Is it's an Aramaic Hebrew word, right? A Samad. What does it mean? It means more than one. Let me prove it to you. If we go to the Hebrew word. Hebrew word. Samad. It's a Hebrew word. So Muhammad stole it from the Hebrew. From the Aramaic. Samad. Samad. A couple, a pair. You see, so it's not one. Guys, it's not one. So Allah is at least two or more, right? Pairs. Allah and, and Akbar. Allah and Akbar. A team. A team of idols, guys. Did you catch it? So Samad, let me go back. Samad is at least two. A team, a couple. Did you catch it? So it's not... One, it, it's one of, one of two at least. Right? Right? Ahad al alihat, at least two. One of the two, one of the three, maybe more. Did you catch it? Don't say Rob Christian is lying. Shame on you, man. The proof is in front of you.
right? When you ask Muslims, they say that Arabic is a sem Semitic language, right? So everything goes back to Aramaic. Aramaic is the first language, right? Hebrew comes from Aramaic. Arabic comes from Aramaic. And this is an Aramaic Hebrew word. Muhammad simply took it and he put it in the Quran, as samad from the Jews. Right? Let me put it for you here. Let me also give you the link. Right? This is the link, guys. Use it. What about Muhammad, guys? What about Muhammad? I mean, look how beautiful and white Muhammad is, guys. You know, Muslims are so proud how white Muhammad is, right? He's so white that even his armpits are white. <laughs> I kid you not. They even are proud to say that his armpits are white. Beautiful, beautiful prophet of Islam, right? Muhammad, you see it here on top? That's Muhammad. What about Muhammad? Did he actually love to be worshipped, guys? Question to the audience. Did Muhammad love to be worshipped? Someone is saying, of course. Why, of course? Can you tell me why Muhammad loved to be worshipped? Any idea? Can someone give me an example why Muhammad loved to be worshipped? They drank his sweat. Exactly. That's a good example. Muslims actually, guys, Muslims, they used to collect the sweat of Muhammad. Not only the sweat, his urine, his pee, I kid you not. They drink his pee. They put his sweat and saliva, his spit, right? Remember in the debate with David Wood and uh, Mimi Hijab? Remember the debate, guys? David Wood mentioned during that debate that Muslims, the Sahaba, the companions of Muhammad, they collected the sweat from the face of Muhammad and they put it on back on their face because for them it was a blessing. They actually worshipped the Prophet. One time Muhammad was injured right blood started to come from his body one of the sahaba cleaned the wound of muhammad let's say from his hand right muhammad was injured and the sahaba the companion cleaned the wound of muhammad and the blood that was left he sucked it he drank the blood of muhammad it's a blessing to drink the blood of muhammad vampires man collecting the blood collecting the urine and one of the women drank the urine of Muhammad <laughs> you're drinking coffee <laughs> don't spit your coffee on the don't <laughs> on your table take it easy my friend well what can I do this is Islam guys come on this is Islam what can I do not my, not my problem. I'm just showing you. I'm just teaching you about Islam. If that's not evidence enough that Muhammad actually was worshipped by his followers, let us go to the Quran to prove it to you. What about that? Do you think we can find evidence from the Quran that Muhammad was worshipped? Yes, we can. Surah An-Nisa, guys, take notes. Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, ayah 80. Chapter 4, ayah 80. He who obeys the messenger, thereby obeys Allah. Did you catch it? So it's not enough to obey Allah. They, you have to obey Muhammad first. You have to obey Muhammad first. Then Allah comes second. Uh-oh. 
Uh oh. Obey Muhammad. That means you're obeying Allah. So how many gods are there in Islam? Muhammad? Allah? Remember guys, let me go back. Allahu Ahad, one of many gods, right? Allat, Al Uzza, Wal Manad, Muhammad, the Son, Akbar, Allah. How many gods are there in Islam? Is my sound good, guys? Is my sound good? Tamara is giving me a two. Is my sound good? <clears throat> okay. Maybe it's you, Tamara. I don't know. Maybe you need to refresh or put the screen quality on 720p. Oh, okay, now it's good. Okay, okay. So make sure to put the screen on 720p for the best quality, guys. So as you see, guys, Muhammad was actually placing himself, making himself equal with Allah. Did you catch it? Yeah, guys, I really want to thank our supporters. A uh, couple weeks ago, you know, I had to replace my... Uh, computer and I want to thank everybody I can't thank any, our supporters enough because they really did a nice donation and I could buy a new PC now because I have a nice amazing PC now I can do uh, live shows without any buffering right you remember the first time that I went live it was horrible right it was really bad <laughs> so thanks to the supporters our Friends, our family in Christ, we can now give you, Lord willing, amazing teaching and live shows, right? Keep us in your prayers, guys. Thank you for everything. I cannot do this without you, guys, right? I can't do this without you. I'm, I don't know, man. You're asking. I have no clue. I, you know, someone told me I went to a, a shop. And someone told me this is good, you know, for streaming. And, you know, it seems good without buffering, right? So, <clears throat> I, have no I have no idea what kind of PC I have. <laughs> so, if we keep continuing, guys, chapter 48. Chapter 48, Ayah 9. Right? Chapter 48, Ayah 9. It says... The following and guys you really need to know Arabic to show you that Muslims have to worship Muhammad yes you heard it correctly pay attention chapter 48 ayah 9 the translation is not very uh, easy to explain but I'll try to do my best if we go let us go to the Arabic first let to aminu you have to believe in Allah and his messenger, pay attention guys, you have to believe in Allah and his messenger and everything according to Arabic grammar rules, Arabic grammar rules, everything that comes behind this last word, the messenger, that is for the messenger, that's for this guy, not Allah. That's how the grammar rules in Arabic work. I'm not sure about the rest of the languages. You know, I'm an Arab, I know my language. I went to school, right? Do, I think we have an uh, Arabic speaker with us, right? Are you with us? Uh, what was your name again, my friend? I think we have at least one Arabic speaker who can confirm this. If there is an Arabic speaker, please give me a one. So you can confirm what I'm trying to explain to our friends in the chat. Do we have an Arabic speaker? Okay, Abdel Haliga, you are an Arabic speaker, right? When you have an Arabic sentence like this, from this verse, لَتُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Right? Everything that comes afterwards is for the last person, right? Can you confirm this? You speak Arabic. That's great, Brand C team. According to Arabic grammar rules, everything that comes after the last person counts for the last person. So, that you may believe in Allah and his apostle. So everything that comes after Muhammad, the apostle, is for him. So if we continue and may assist him, 
and honor him and may glorify. Hollow means glorify. Glorify you, Muhammad, the apostle. Every morning, at every dawn and evening. Did you catch it? So, the Arabic speakers can confirm, according to Arabic grammar rules, everything that comes after is for the last guy. So, Muslims have actually have to glorify and worship Muhammad every morning and evening. Subhanallah, Subhan to Muhammad. Pagan Islamic cult, worshipping Muhammad. Who is Allah? It's Muhammad, it's Allah, it's the Sun Akbar, it's the three bird idols. Right? Subhan Muhammad, yeah. This is shirk, guys. Shirk is, is in this ayah, right? This is the clear, crystal clear shirk that Muslims have to worship and glorify Muhammad. Did you catch it? Let me play for you a small video clip, guys, from our beloved friend, our beloved friend, Zakaria Butrus to confirm what I just said. Listen guys to Zakaria Butrus. To show you how the Quran elevates Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, to the same level of Allah, <coughs> making him a deity Zakaria Butrus will come after Allah, my as we saw us earlier in this video. For Al-Masih, the Messiah. Let us go to chapter 48, ayah 9. Let me read the Arabic for you guys. لُتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا In order that ye may believe in Allah and his messenger, that ye may assist Muhammad in war and honor Muhammad, and may glorify him who the messenger because the last word is the messenger at early dawn and the close of day even if you go to the arabic because the last word is warasulihi his messenger everything that comes after addresses the last person even to the arabic grammar style even according to the arabic rules of sentence of grammar grammatics the last word is the one addressed after so as you see we can say that according to chapter 48 ayah 9 here the quran elevates muhammad to the same level of allah this is pure blasphemy, this is pure shirk. Glorifying Muhammad besides Allah. So here we have again for the second time blasphemy shirk. To glorify Muhammad besides Allah. I'm going to show you a video from our dear friend Zakaria Butrus. He's going to confirm what I just said. And let me translate during the video. Did you catch it? He said the last word is Rasulihi. So let us continue. Respect him. Assist him, respect him, and glorify him. Rasul, yes. He's the last name. <laughs> Did you catch what he said? The 
horrifying <laughs> basically the the face palm uh, the uh, the black incident as he uh, call it musiba soda ya khabar abyad for the arabic speaking people uh, between us they know what this means so let us continue كل واحد من المشاهدين ياخذ باله من الكلمه دي بعد ما قال تعذروه يعني تعينوه وتوقروه يعني تحترموه اه assist him respect him شوفوا بقى المصيبه السوداء بقى the black incident وتسبحوا وتسبحوا glorify him who the prophet did you catch it the prophet بكرة وأصيلة ونسمعها علشان خاطر ما تقولوش إن إحنا بنألف. So he's going to play uh, the recitation from an Arabic sheikh, so to show you that we are not lying about the recitation or the ayah in the Arabic. وتعزروه وتوقروه وتسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا خلاص بكرة تسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا Did you catch it guys? I mean how more proof do you need? How much more proof do you need that Muslims according to the Quran that you have to worship Muhammad Shirk in the Quran, you have to worship Muhammad, Muslims. Wake up, man. And you, Muslims, dare to say, look at the Christians, they are worshipping Jesus. You filthy, disgusting hypocrites. Disgusting hypocrites, man. You dare to point fingers at us while we worship Jesus, our Lord and Savior. But at the same time, you are not looking into your own mirror According to your own Quran, you have to glorify Muhammad. Chapter 48, Ayah 9. Right? Chapter 48, Ayah 9. That you may believe in Allah and His Apostle. You have to glorify the Apostle every morning and evening. Worship. Shirk. You see how they are worshipping a dead man? Exactly. Rauch, worshipping a dead man, glorifying a dead man. They have to do this every morning, every evening. Pagan religion, man. Pagan satanic cult, man. Right? So they are not only worshipping the moon idol Allah, they are not only worshipping Allah al Uzza wal Manat, but they are actually worshipping Muhammad. Two, how many idols, how many gods are there in Islam, guys? I don't think Christian Prince has mentioned this before, right, guys? Maybe we need to give this ayah to Christian Prince because he has a bigger audience than me. I think uh, our admins, our beloved admins, Phil, you need to give this ayah to Christian Prince that he can explain it in his live show this ayah is not discussed enough guys really this is really important proof that muslims have to worship muhammad i don't think this is discussed by christian prayer i never seen it before i found it accidentally guys to be honest with you i found this ayah ex accidentally and by showing you this ayah we can expose the shirk the blasphemy of worshipping a Muhammad. So Phil or others who can contact Christian Prince or maybe David Wood or Sam Shamoon, we need to discuss this ayah more often. Okay? This is new material that we can use, guys. This is new stuff. Right? Lord of mercy. Worshipping a dead man in his grave in Medina. Right? 
worshipping a dead man every morning, every evening. Right? And to make it even more worse for the Muslims, guys, to show you that there are more than one God in Islam, not only Muhammad, not only Allah, not only the son Akbar and his three dirt, bird idols, daughters, if we go to chapter 6, Surah Al-An'am, chapter 6, take notes, Ayah 101, Allah is saying, how could Allah have a son when he does not have a companion and he created all things, right? So it says, how can Allah have a son if he does not have a companion? So Allah needs a wife, he needs a sahiba, a girlfriend, sahiba means girlfriend in Arabic guys. How can he Allah have a son if he doesn't have a, a girlfriend? Right? Chapter 6, Ayah 101. So Allah needs a girlfriend to produce a son. And we saw in chapter 53, chapter 53, that Allah only wants a son. He doesn't want th daughters, right? Remember? <laughs> Allah doesn't like daughters. But he has three daughters, in fact, right? He doesn't like it. And to, to put the nails on the coffin of Muhammad and this fake satanic code, if we go to chapter 21, ayah 17, Allah is saying, and if we wanted to have a girlfriend, right? Lahwan. If you want to have a girlfriend, a diversion, a partner, we could have taken it to us from ourselves. Who is ourselves, guys? How many gods are there? So according to this ayah, there are many people like Allah. There are many gods like Allah in the Islamic brothel called Jannah. You see that? Ourselves. Who is ourselves, Allah? Please, Muslims, explain this ayah to me. Maybe I'm ignorant. Why is Allah saying ourselves? I thought that Muslims always have claimed that there's nothing like Allah. There's nothing like Allah. But here Allah is saying that there are ourselves. Uh-oh. Ourselves, Allah? Who is? How many Allahs are? Are you talking about your wife, the son, Akbar? Uh oh oof 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 aha so Allah is talking about him and him his wife I think don't you think guys ourselves ourselves us ourselves uh oh So guys, how many proof do I need to give you to show you that Islam is nothing but a cult, a satanic religion, a pagan cult with many gods? Muslims, please wake up. Please wake up. The proof is in front of you. Disaster upon disaster upon disaster. Shirk upon shirk. Blasphemy upon blasphemy in Islam. If this is not crystal clear proof, today's teaching, if this is not crystal clear proof that Islam is a pagan religion with many gods, then I don't need to know what the meaning of paganism is. Right, guys? Are there any questions? Do we have any Muslim astas among us? Do we have an Imam? Do we have a Muslim who will kill me on my live show? We are live, guys. Call us. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian without separation. Call me on Skype, guys. The Rob Christian. Prove me wrong. Yeah, Kyrie Alison, you are very late, but please, you need to rewatch today's live show. Okay, rewatch it, replay it when YouTube 
process it it will take maybe 30 minutes but you really need to watch it guys download this video download this video and please don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button click also on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live right help me to help you guys so muslims wake up please come back home either you're going to stay in this satanic pagan cult or leave islam stay away of islam and come back home to jesus christ your lord and savior all right <clears throat> do we have any muslim do we have any question uh, Sahih al Bukhari, Brand C team, Sahih al Bukhari, Volume 6. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, I think you're talking about this, uh, my friend. Is this, is this the hadith that you're talking about? This is Sahih al-Bukhari, this one, right? Just give me a confirmation. Is this the hadith that you're talking about? Okay, let us read it, guys. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 6. Hadith number 475, right? Read with me. Narrated Jundub bin Sufyan. Once Allah's apostle became sick and could not offer his night prayer for two or three nights. Okay, so Muhammad could not pray anymore in the night for three or two nights. Then Allah, sorry, then a lady, Someone is calling me. Wait a second, guys. Let me accept this call. Let's see if we have a Muslim. Hello? Hello. Hello, welcome. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Hi. Uh, so, I was watching your video. I was recommended to it by uh, some of my uh, fellow Muslim brothers. Yeah. And I want to... Uh, Ask a simple question. Hopefully, you'll be able to answer this. Okay. Are you going to stick uh, to the topic of today's uh, live show? Uh, regarding worship of Muhammad? Yeah, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, okay. my, this exact question. Okay. So, you mentioned the ayah, yeah? Where it says to glorify him and so on and so forth, yeah? Chapter 48, ayah 9, yes. Okay. Can you show me the word where it shows, or any variations of the word of abd, ibadah, or ta'bud? Yeah. To sabbih, what mean, can you can you tell me what to sabbih mean? What to sabbihuhu mean? Uh, or I uh, mean, it usually comes from the word tasbih. Yep. Tasbih it can, in general, yeah. mean to remember, in honor. Now, of no, course, no, no. It doesn't mean that. It means glorify. And what is glorification? Who is worthy to be glorified? Can you tell me that? What, what, what do you mean by glorification? When you glorify someone, who do you glorify? Uh, Allah. Thank you very much. And the prophets. And the prophets. The prophets? The you glorify prophets? We praise them. Yeah, that's a form of glorification. Do you not praise your prophets? We don't glorify anyone except God, my friend. Okay, but that's Jesus, yeah? God is Jesus. Yeah, our God is Jesus. But Jesus has nothing to do with this. Glorification, my friend. Who is worthy to be glorified? Only Allah, according to Islam, right? Why are you lying? And I asked you, and I asked you again. What I, do you mean I, by glorification. Glorification means worshiping someone I, well, who, who needs to be you, worshipped. I asked you for the word yeah. ibadah concerning Muhammad. If you can show me Rasul and the word ibadah near it, then I will accept that it says to worship Muhammad. Prove to me before we continue. Prove to me that. To sabbih is only is for the prophets. I challenge you to prove to me that tasbih is not only for Allah in Islam. What about that? Do you accept the challenge before we continue? 
the challenge? Yeah. Can you glorify a prophet in Islam? I challenge you to prove to me that you are allowed to glorify a prophet, like you said. Glorify him in praise that we can. No, 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 no. Forget about praise. I, I can show you that praise is only for Allah. But forget about praising. I am asking you, listen carefully, my friend. Prove to me, as you said earlier, prove to me that you are that you can, you are allowed to glorify anyone except Allah. But Allah. And you mean worship, yes? It's worship, isn't it? Glorification. What is glorification, guys? What does glorification? According, if we go to glorify, just let us go to Prophet Google, peace be upon him. Here, the screen is in front of you, guys. Can you read what it says, my friend? I don't have the screen in front of me. Well, you can open up uh, YouTube, but please mute it so you can see the screen. If we go to, you, to Google, peace be upon him, and type in the meaning of glorification or glorify, it says, praise and worship God. To glorify God. Does it say to glorify prophets? Tasbih is only for Allah, my friend. Why are you lying? Am I lying? Yeah, you are. And the proof is in front of you and everyone is laughing, my friend. Don't think we are stupid. Come on. Well, I don't mind if anybody laughs at me. Yeah, okay. But can you say sorry to everybody and say... I lied. Well, I asked you what glorify meant, so I never clarified. That so, glorified so are you telling me you don't know the mean meaning? Worship. You you don't mean you don't know the meaning. I refer to glorify as praise. You don't know the meaning, so you don't know the meaning, my friend. Just say Did you I hear don't what I said? know. No, you can't change the meaning. Okay, I'm not changing the meaning. And let me show you. Let me show you from your own Quran. That only Allah is to be praised. What about that? You mean in general, where is this? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Yeah, do you see it? You just Which quoted it. Chap chapter 1 to, to Allah. To Allah. Yeah. Alhamd, the praise is for Allah. Is it for Muhammad? So no. it's absolutely wrong to praise anybody else, yeah? Yeah, so I'm just, no. I'm just praise. addressing what you said. Praising, worshipping, glorifying is for who? Only for Allah alone. So why are you lying, my friend? I don't know if you know this, but when we say Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, which means may Allah have praise, salli no. means a praise or a prayer upon him. Yeah, upon is that who? Not praise? Yeah. So Allah is praying to who, my friend? You want to change topic? No, Allah now? is granting prayer upon Muhammad. Granting he's praying to who when he prays? Allah. Alayhi, sallallahu alayhi, who, Allah is doing salah, him. right? Allah is doing the salah, right? No, 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 no. Allah, salli, salli means Allah, praise. Allah, you salli. Allah, the Quran says, Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayu alladhina amunu salli wa alihi wa sallim wa taslima. Yeah. So Allah and the angels are praying on Muhammad. So yes. let me ask you a question. Praising him. Let me ask you a question. When Allah prays, to who does yes. he pray when he prays on Muhammad? I mean, when I pray, I pray to God, right? When Allah prays, when Allah you salli, to who Allah prays? So you believe that when Allah... I don't believe God, that. It's That's what the ayah is saying, my friend. No, 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 no. Allah no, you no. salli, right? It, the yes, ayah yes, is yes, saying, yes. Allah you salli. I agree. So when Allah... Praise. Okay, so when Allah you salli, ana asalli, huwa you salli, he... I pray, he prays, so Allah you salli, he prays. So when Allah you salli, when Allah prays on Muhammad, to who is Allah praying when he prays? That's my question. So salli means prayer, as in dua. You salli means he's about? praying, he prays, I pray. Oh, on, when, on, listen, on. listen, listen, listen. When I say in Arabic, Ana asalli means I pray. Ana asalli. When I say he prays, Allah prays, you say huwa yusalli. So when Allah, prayer? when Allah yusalli, when Allah prays, to who is Allah praying? To another God? Is Allah praying to another God? Is Allah praying to himself? Is Allah praying to Jibreel? To who is Allah praying when he prays on Muhammad? Answer the question, okay. my friend. Okay. Alhamdulillah. When you say pray, 
prayer, I'm asking you, when you say salli, are you referring to dua, which means supplication? As I, I no, 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 I'm referring to the praying, praying. It's you salli, praying. What, the does word what does that mean? Salah is praying, right? But we know Prayer. that salah, salah came after, meaning that the actual practice of salah did not exist when the word salli existed. Now, did it? What no. is salah? What is salah? Salah is a form of Pray. worship to Allah. Thank you. It's an act of worship. Did you catch it? So when Allah worships, when Allah prays, when, praise when Allah, He worships, when who, you, who is Allah you, worshiping for this okay. case of Muhammad? For the when cause of praise, Muhammad? When you praise you, Muhammad, guys, do you, you hear it? People? Did you hear it, guys? He said it's an act of worship. So when Salah, Allah is, Salah is an act of worship. when Allah is worshiping, who is Allah worshiping? Thank you very much. Salli, answer the salli, question. Not Salah. Salah is a form of worship. Means the action, which means somebody praying or worshiping. Thank you. Allah. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. But so salli, when Allah is in the ayah, when Allah is worshiping, who to, is Allah worshiping? When salli in this you know aspect what, you know, you know what, refers to a you prayer, know, you know which what? means a prayer you will be are upon really wasting him. my time. Guys, guys, enough is enough. You heard him, right? Enough is enough, guys. I don't want to mock this guy more than, than he is already mocking himself and his pagan cult. Allah is worshipping. You heard it, guys. You, hear, you heard him. He says it's in form of, of worship. Thank you. And we showed you from chapter... 48 ayah 9 that Muhammad needs to be worshipped. He needs to be glorified. Thank you guys. Thank you for clarifying what I said today. You know, guys, I really, I really, if you're noticing, guys, I am not enjoying, I'm not enjoying him to show you that he's nothing but doing fooling himself he's fooling himself he's not fooling me he's not fooling you guys right you heard him it's recorded right it's on youtube tasbih is glorification right we showed you the meaning of glorification it's only for god no one else is worthy to be glorified to be praised even the name of muhammad is shirk you know guys Muhammad's name is the praised one. The praised one. So Muhammad, when he took on his that name, it's a title. It's a divine title. Muhammad, the name is a divine title. It means the praised one. So even the name of Muhammad is shirk. Who is worthy to be praised, guys? God! Right? Let me make it bigger. Who is worthy to be praised and glorified? And to be worshipped? God. Only God. So, Muhammad, his real name is not even Muhammad. It's Qathim. Right? So, when Muhammad became Muhammad, when he took on that name, he... Love to be worshipped. He lo be loved to be praised. To be glorified. And he put in the Quran to be glorified. Glorify the apostle. Glorify the prophet. Right? Guys, you know, it is what it is. Deal with it. Swallow it. Deal with it. And we didn't even mention the black stones, guys. We didn't even mention the black stones yet, right? The black stones that Muslims bow down to. Kiss and lick the black stones. And the black stones can even forgive sins, right? If you touch them. They suck the sins of Muslims. How many gods are there in Islam, guys? You heard the gentleman. It's an act of worship. So when Allah is praying, to who is Allah praying? To his wife, Akbar? And guys, really, I, I'm not doing this to, to mock Muslims. I really don't see the enjoyment in it. I'm not enjoying exposing Muslims. Because I pity them. These people are in the dark. 
They are worshipping a dead man. Right? Guys, we are doing this for the truth. I don't see how you can enjoy of busting someone. But we have to do it to show you that Islam is nothing but a pagan cult. Please, my friend, leave this pa pagan satanic cult. Please come back to Jesus. It's an insult for the true living God of the Bible to worship Muhammad, to worship Allah, Satan, in disguise. Please come back home, my friend. Guys, did you enjoy today's teaching and the call that we just had? How many proof do we need to give you and show you that Muslims need to worship Muhammad every morning and every evening? Did, did you see me lie? I challenge any Muslim to call me and prove to me that I lied today. I'll give you $1,000 if you can refute me. I will close my YouTube channel. Love you too, guys. You see, guys, when you are following a dead cult, a fake prophet, it's very easy to spank such a dead cult, a satanic pagan cult. It's very easy to expose it. Right? You don't need to be the biggest teacher ever. You know, this is the reason why Ustads, Imams, are not calling us. Because they will lose face. And it, being an Imam, being a, an Ustaz in Islam, is big business. You watch the BBC documentary about Mut'a, guys. You saw how, what kind of big business those Imams are. They have. They own women. They are pimping out women. It's a huge business, huge thing to be an Imam. So this is why they don't dare to call us live. Because they will lose business, they will use their job. Exactly, Potter. Guys, if you are enjoying our teachings, Please don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button and don't forget to click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live like today or upload new videos. <clears throat> Are there any questions guys? Do we have another Muslim? Who has the courage? I mean, you know, to be honest guys. I'm not kidding you. I really respect the courage of this gentleman who just called me. He's really... He, he does have the courage to call me, right? Not like his imam, right? Who is scared like a puppy, sitting somewhere in the bushes. I respect the courage of this gentleman, right? And he really sounded like a really respectful guy, right? This is why I, I was giving him respect back, right? And he showed you clearly, you know, he showed you that it's nothing but an act of worship. So the question after 1400 years still stands. When Allah you salli, when Allah prays, to who is Allah praying? And why are you Muslims worshipping Muhammad? Tasbih, to sabbihu Muhammad. Why are you glorifying Muhammad according to the Quran? Isn't that sure? Isn't that blasphemy? Either you're going to deal with the shirk in Islam, with the blasphemy in Islam, worshipping Muhammad, a dead man, or you're going to leave this satanic cult, this pagan cult, stop worshipping a dead man in the form of Muhammad, come back home to Jesus, and every knee will bow and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Come back to Jesus. No one can help you. The dead man Muhammad who is rotting in his grave somewhere in Medina cannot help you. You need to come back to Jesus. Okay, we were talking, by the way, before the gentleman called in. I almost forgot. Thank you for reminding me, Prancy. So our friend Prancy team gave me this hadith. Okay? And I was reading it. So let us read it again. Then a lady... 
the wife of Abu Lahab. Guys, Abu Lahab is the guy that the, uh, Muhammad is basically insulting. This is, this is his uncle. His own uncle was making fun of Muhammad. His own uncle knew Abu Lahab is not his real name, right? They gave him this name. So they, are, they are insulting the uncle of Muhammad, right, in Islam. So his own uncle knew this guy is nothing but a scam. Muhammad is nothing but a scam, right? So the wife of Muhammad, uh, of uh, Abu Lahab, sorry, came and said, O oh Muhammad, I think that your Satan has forsaken you, for I have not seen him with you for two or three nights. On that Allah revealed, by the forenoon and by the night when it darkens, your Lord has neither forsaken you nor hated you. Uh-oh. So here, Allah is Satan. Did you catch it? Thank you for this hadith, my friend. Thank you. So <laughs> the wife of his uncle, she's saying to him, hey, your Satan has forsaken you, Muhammad. Then suddenly Allah appears. So Satan in the form of Allah appears <laughs> and he sends down this eye. <laughs> Allah is Satan. <laughs> Lord of mercy. Uh -huh. Thank you, Brand. Thank you. Guys, <clears throat> let me give you the link. Oof, oof, oof. Where is Christian Prince when you need him? Let me give you the link. This is the link. Bookmark it. Save it. Use it. Help me to help you guys. We need to expose this satanic pagan cult. <laughs> don't break the keyboard. My friend, I don't, use, I don't need my keyboard, man. You know, I'm using a microphone. My microphone is my biggest weapon, right? Muslims are the ones who are keyboard terrorists, right? We, are, we need, actually, guys, yesterday we were talking about the DeLorean. You remember the time travel machine from the movie Back to the Future, the DeLorean? Right? We need to invent a DeLorean, a time travel machine, go back and give Muhammad and his Sahaba some keyboards. Because today's Muslims are nothing but keyboard terrorists. Muhammad would turn around in his own grave if he sees how soft the Muslims of today have become. So we should go back and give Muhammad keyboards instead of swords. Right? Swords don't work anymore in 2019. They are using their keyboards. <coughs> oh, man. Shirk on top of shirk. Paganism on top of paganism. Worshipping Muhammad. Obeying Muhammad before Allah. Right? Obey Muhammad, then obey Allah. Worshipping and glorifying the Rasul. Uh oh. Guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button, please. Help me to help you. Download our videos. I think today's video is really amazing. Right? No Muslim can refute today's live show. Use it. Download it. Cut parts that you like from it and upload it on your social accounts, guys. I know, I know guys, you love Christian Prince. I love Christian Prince more than you. I love to go to Christian Prince to watch his live shows. But also don't forget about us, right guys? Keep us in your prayers, support us. Right? Keep us in your prayers. We need your prayers, guys, to keep doing what we do, to stay healthy, to stay safe, to expose Islam so that Muslims can come back home to Jesus. Muslims, drop Islam, and I invite you to come back home to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. No one else can help you. The dead man that you are worshipping, Muhammad, who is laying in his grave, rotting in Medina, he cannot help you. Only the living Jesus in heaven can help you come back to jesus come back home
There's no future in Islam. Come back home to Jesus. Thank you for watching guys. God bless you. See you again very soon. Jesus is Lord and Islam is nothing but a pagan cult and the proof we showed you today on today's live show. Thank you for watching. God bless you and your families. See you very soon again, Lord willing. God bless.